I'm going to pass you over to Chitra, who is going to close our conference and to share with you her insights from today and the big take- takeaways and also to maybe um, just officially thank everybody and to say uh, over and out. So that's me. I'm, I'm off. And to Chitra. Heels. I don't wear heels that much, and it's showing. Uh, I had to do a dance just now in heels. Oh my god! Um, so I thought it'd be interesting to wrap up, and there's no way I can give you all the takeaways. I mean, that would be, you know, Google's job in a few years. You know, just press and get all the takeaways in one shot. But I thought it'd be interesting to share some of the slides from last year. Um, you know, because you know the the. Messages and the lessons are recurring. And um, we, so for those of you who don't know this, uh, I think I'm going to use this mic, actually, sorry, because I move a lot. And is it on? No? Oh, sorry. Hello? Hello? No? Hello? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hello. Um, so uh, some of you might remember this This. Um, uh, Im- these images, a very young Chitra and Roman Stern and a young Roman Stern up on a digger looking out at um, the bay uh, in, in Martin, you know, where the bay houses are now in Martinel Sagrish. God, don't we look young? But, you know, that's what a business does to you. Yeah, field of dreams, exactly. <laughs> that's exactly it. That's Roman going, yep, I think you know, this is where uh, this block of bay houses is going to go, and this is going to be the view from uh, this house. So um, uh, I don't have the clicker. I just, oh, here it is. Um, uh, I I haven't got the whole presentation here, but it it was just uh, hilarious that uh, so many of the lessons, you know, challenges that we have faced, a complex, complex licensing process, quite different to what Rob was talking about in terms of licensing the product, but we had to go through all these um, uh, bureaucratic challenges in getting our product up and running. And how many times did we hear today uh, for all the other businesses uh, that you know people had to, the entrepreneurs had to overcome barriers, whether they were personal, inside, uh, you know, emotional barriers or uh, barriers um, to entry of a market or you know just naysayers in general. So you know, <laughs> this was that was the field that we bought uh, with. Uh, some roads, and now you have Mark Nelsagers there. So, um, you know, good to remind ourselves. The other thing that I t- thought uh, is a common recurring theme is um, selling a vision with nothing built. Every entrepreneur in the room knows what that's about. I mean, you're talking about what your what is in your head, but people don't quite get it yet, and it's so obvious to you. But you need some props and things to help people see your vision. And uh, that was the stand we had up uh, uh, on site to show people the view. Again, force majeure, <laughs> majeure, majeure, uh, whichever uh, way you, you, you pronounce it in, in, in Latin. How is it pronounced? Any tips? Majeure. Okay. <laughs> so um, September 16th, 2008 marked... Um, a horrific day. It was Lehman Brothers collapsing. Uh, you know, last year I said, does anyone recognize any of these pictures? And uh, that was a pretty uh, tough thing for us to um, manage. Um, you know, as the uh, world descended into a global crisis, uh, you know, everything changed for us. Uh, while we were happily laying our first stone in the second big phase of Martinial, uh, and, you know, several other challenges had to be overcome. Just like, I mean, you know, I, I couldn't help thinking of these moments when Rob was telling his story, you know, each step. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, especially when he uh, showed the Dragon's Den picture. I mean, the, the no's uh, for us didn't, weren't so public and on TV, but trust me, everyone has to go through that. You know, when you're looking for financing or, um, you know, whatever uh, it is, you will hear the no's. Um, how many times have we heard about building up your team with the right people? It's a very old photo, so please don't be upset if your photo isn't here. It's just that these photos all were all taken before we actually opened Martignal, before 2010. So it had to start um, uh, working then. And if there's one takeaway, uh, um, well, there are many takeaways today, but if there's one takeaway, surround yourself with people with complementary skills. Surround yourself 
with people with complementary skills to yourself because that's the path to success. And this is what we've worked very hard at. Uh, I, I love all the smiles going, oh, look, look, it's so-and-so and so-and-so. Exactly, yes. A very young everyone here, actually. <laughs> so <laughs> more than 10 years ago. Uh, this is a very revealing picture. I mean, all of you shared your low moments today. Yulia, uh, I wish I looked like Princess Kate coming out of the hospital seven hours after a child. But how did she do that? I mean, honestly... Uh, how is that possible? Because this is what I looked at, like huh, an hour after the birth of my third child. And I can promise you I was not uh, tiptoeing out of the hospital in heels and a nice dress because nothing fit anymore. Um, whatever, how, however much you prepare, you feel like you're wearing a bag of potatoes coming out of the hospital and you're crying your eyes out because your hormones are going up and down. And I totally uh, uh, you know, agree with your story about, you know, getting yourself to think about uh, life uh, as a walk in the park, but it's so hard, uh, especially uh, for me, it's months after the, the children. I could not understand all these fantastic people who just, you know, <laughs> come out of hospital, you know, and just lead life so normally, going for walks with the babies. I couldn't move for two weeks after my first baby. And, you know, he was a very big baby. I had to receive two pints of blood afterwards, and trust me, I could not move uh, neither could I talk, and I was just a mess. But, you know, the important thing is to surround yourself uh, by people who understand that. Sadly, your doctor asked, you know, a terrible question. But, you know, this is why in, in China, women have one month of confinement with their mom making them soups and, you know, healing herbs uh, to look after them. That's the way it should be. And, you know, <laughs> we shouldn't be afraid of saying that. You know, why should we model ourselves after Bouncing Kate, you know? Pinterest perfect, exactly. <laughs> so, oh yeah, um, yeah, and I went through, I mean, you know, again, how many times did we hear today? Months of pregnancy, I counted 54 months of breastfeeding and years of sleepless nights. Years of sleepless nights too, exactly. 54 months of breastfeeding. You know, it, it was just, it was manic while we were building up the business. Um, very hard years, I can promise you. Uh, but we got, you know, <laughs> these four beautiful kids from it. And, you know, I, I also think, you know, these moments, you know, creating moments while you're building a your business up, remember to create those moments too. It's not always easy. Today I'm trying to make it for the crucible, um, you know, in which my son is acting. Uh, I tr trust me, I've missed uh, some other shows. And boy, do they make you remember it for the rest of your life. You did not make it to my winter show. You did not make it to my moon landing show. You know, yes, I'm not a perfect mother, you know, but um, I try, I try very hard to be a great mother. Um, so, uh, and they get it. They get it later. Now they don't. But, you know, for the first time now, I'm hearing the, when they go into teenage years, they're actually coming back with the, oh my God, you know, you've moved from a basement in Lagos to, to this. That's pretty amazing, mama. And, you know, so the compliments do come, do come, wait for it, uh, you know. But I can't help thinking of the, the example. I mean, uh, I'm reading Shoe Dog. Uh, how many of you? Shoe Dog is by Phil Knight, the founder of Nike. Very easy to read book. Um, I'm a third of the way through. And, you know, uh, when I read about him, actually, you know, he worked ever so hard to build his business up and lots of lessons to be learned there. But, um, you know, uh, he had a difficult relationship with his children somehow. And I haven't, got, you know, understood exactly why. One of them, sorry, the second one is okay, the first one not. Um, and equally, um, who, how many of you have watched Winnie the Pooh, the, the story about A.A. A. Milne and his son Christopher Robin? can't remember what it's called now, but... Sorry, yeah, it's a beautiful story. Watch it. <laughs> but it just, you know, all those things um, that A.A. Um, a. Milne was doing... Um, you know, he thought it was a great thing for his child, but this child just was, Christopher Robin himself was just sick of all the attention that, you know, uh, the world was giving him, and he felt used by his dad, uh, you know, to further his career. So, you know, listen, but in the end, it works out okay, because he realizes, you know, he made peace with, with the situation. We can never do things right. <laughs> We're always failing, it's true. But I don't think that, uh, you know, reflecting uh, on it, you know, Phil Knight's son maybe just was not reconciled to it, period. Maybe he couldn't see 
the bright side of things. So sometimes we have to think that. We can't just kill ourselves about it. You know, this is what I've come to. So, yeah, building awareness, publicity, marketing. I mean, um, how many times have we uh, heard, uh, you know, uh, some, some people are lucky enough not to have any marketing spend, um, uh, <laughs> a, a nibble and squeak, you know, uh, a lot of word of mouth, great. Um, uh, you know, others have to keep spending uh, some money on marketing. Um, in our business, you know, it was crucial, especially because we were doing things differently, building up a, a brand in a remote location. So there are different stories, but, you know, somehow you have to build up awareness. Uh, this was, uh, same slide last year, but building up, uh, th this shows the annual unique visitors on our website, quite different to Andrew Dr Andrew's numbers, but, you know, quite big for a, a single a hotel at the time. Um, this was just when we had opened um, Kashkaish, I think. Oh, no, 2016, full numbers. So just after we had finished opening all four hotels. You know, 2016, we opened two hotels. So uh, it took us time to build up. Uh, th this, for me, is a measure of demand, you know, the number of unique visitors to our website. So filling the resort, uh, Selling, you know, monetizing your business. At the end of the day, yes, we can have a business uh, which is not monetized and you only do it for fun. And it's great to have uh, the followers on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, some of us, um, you know, it's important to monetize for whatever reason, you know, whether we have borrowed money or whether outsiders have invested in our business. So, you know, filling the resort was very important. Delivering the service, that's the next step, you know. Uh, we've also heard about uh, how the uh, delivery uh, 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 of a product may not uh, fit with what um, people are expecting, you know. So, yes, and this is the, pretty much the same thing. I left some of these slides here. Building revenues, profits, and paying back the bank. Um, I thought it'd be nice to add a recent picture of my kids. So um, this was literally taken a couple of weeks ago, so you have an up-to-date picture. Uh, and I thought I should keep that up to remind me that I have to leave for the crucible in a bit. Um, so, uh, but, you know, uh, several other... Uh, I just took down quotes, and it's going to sound a bit like James Joyce's Dubliners, <laughs> stream of conscious thought. So excuse me. But uh, Ulysses, right, sorry, not Dubliners, excuse me, sorry. Quoting the wrong Irish literature, oh, heathen. So, <laughs> sorry. Um, so, well, you know, the, the point about that book is it's literally just a stream of conscious thought and very difficult to read, Ulysses. Um, but uh, you know, I'm going to try to avoid completely, uh, you know, uh, sounding like that, but, you know, it might be inevitable. So, you know, start with Olivia, who was the first speech of the day. You know, the exciting, the excitement of starting up when you launch, when you, when you hit that click, it's live now. And, you know, uh, with all the tensions that built up to it, and you're the first Facebook follower, and you come down, but then after that, you have to work damn hard to refresh, <laughs> keep hitting refresh to see whether there's any more followers. But you have to work damn hard. Let there be no lies there. They worked very hard on building up the followers. Um, it doesn't happen by magic. It doesn't happen just organically. Uh, you have to put some effort into it. Um, Andrew Dent, don't let perfect be the enemy of good. You know, I often say, you know, for me, I call it the 80-20 rule. You know, listen, I don't have the, um, uh, the you know, the, uh, what do you call it? The uh, words failing me now. Uh, I just can't afford to wait sometimes. I just need to go live. Okay, guys, it may not be perfect, but, you know, let's just go with it. Or, you know, we have uh, these discussions often with Roman. He's quite a perfectionist. If you think I'm bad, oh, my God. You know, um, so I'm like, no, but, you know, time to market is much more important than, you know, getting the perfect uh, situation. So, look, we could argue either way. You know, if Trunky wasn't ready for the market... You know, uh, you couldn't have gone live, but uh, uh, equally. So we have to balance that. But don't let perfect be the enemy of good. I think it's a valuable lesson. Um, I've learned invaluable lessons, uh, or everyone, you know, we've learned invaluable lessons about uh, entering a new market uh, in the U.S. Don't assume just because they speak the same language that they'll uh, behave in the same way. Uh, you know, whether it's Germans in Austria, Switzerland, Germany, 
don't assume they're the same, please, they're not. <laughs> or um, the UK and Ireland, you know, not to be considered the same market at all. You know, crack in Ireland means something different to crack in the UK. So, <laughs> no, uh, very often uh, the Irish say you go to Ireland for the crack which means you go there for the fun, not for the weather, right? No, I love it, I love it, you know, but it's a great example. You go there for the crack, not for the weather. Uh, it might be misunderstood by some markets, but, you know, these, these are just examples of, you know, how people can speak the same language, you know, but be completely misunderstood by each other. Um, sweater, jumper, <laughs> pants, trousers, etc. So, you know, always... Um, uh, look carefully and think carefully about uh, the market. Yummy mummy, not yummy mummy, uh, soccer mom, etc. Very valuable lessons. Um, building credibility and dimension of extreme importance. I think if you're going to scale up, you need to build the credibility up first and then go for the dimension. Um, there are no ready solutions to parenting and kids. Who said that? Jan, uh, Jan's founder, where is she? Oh, she's gone. I'm sorry. Okay. But, you know, yeah, there are no ready solutions. We all, you know, think that uh, we're different because we're b being blown to bits by our kids. But, you know, there's no ready solutions. Um, there are emotions behind every product. I mean, at the end of the day, yes, if you're selling to human beings, there are emotions behind the products. And, you know, um, sometimes I, I, I hear of products, you know, that uh, people think should be just self-selling or that companies should just be buying you know if it's not selling try to tweak it you know you need to be filling a need you need to be removing a pain point uh and uh there needs to be emotion behind it uh removing a pain point is, is emotion because you feel good about something so don't forget the emotions um uh, I love uh, managing the roller coaster thank you yes indeed hashtag manage the roller coaster it's so true um and you know, all that stuff about emotional support, get a grip on guilt, be brave. Here's where it's sounding like a, a stream of conscious thought, but, you know, these are the hashtags I took from your presentation. And providing a nurturing and loving family environment is far more important than anything else. And I think, you know, that's what we try to do. We beg our mothers, our mothers-in-law uh, to come home when we're not there. Because, I mean, the reason I call my mom often is because, you know, I somehow think that she'd be, uh, you know, the best substitute for me because she's even better than I am. And, you know, don't forget to tap into your family network. Don't be too proud to do it. I'm not. I've called her so many times in the last 20 years. Please, please, I need you. <laughs> you know? Um, so uh, what was interesting was, uh, you know, on one hand, it's far more important to provide a, a nurturing, loving family environment, uh, you know, uh, whether you're a stay-at-home mom or not, but at the base that all we do, I am the mother of four. Uh, Gracinia said that, you know, and it's true. Sometimes uh, we have to remember that, you know, all that. That's why I enjoy business trips, you know, because I can leave the kids at home. And you, 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 it's like going on holiday, isn't it, when you go on a business trip? <laughs> it's because actually at the base of all I do, I'm a mother of four, and you're brought down to that reality uh, and also uh, uh, wonderful reality sometimes that, you know, that is the base, and we often discuss this, the happiness of the children at the end of the day uh, is crucial to, for their well-being, and so you really try to uh, work on that the hardest. Hashtag design your life, you're in control, <laughs> I like that. Um, uh, you know, we also uh, heard about working with your other half, and I sort of brought that back to what Andrew said, you know, uh, <laughs> You know, if, if you're a sole founder, it's a lonely journey. It's lonely enough as an entrepreneur, even if you're in a partnership. You know, you're struggling with these things yourself. You know, you're trying to paint the best picture to the banks, to your employees. Everything is awesome. Everything is great. You know, you really um, uh, have to keep things going and hold things together, especially when crisis hits. Uh, so it is a lonely journey. You're struggling. Um, and so, you know, I'm even happier that I'm actually doing it with my other half. You know, Gracinia, uh, um, you know, brought that up, uh, uh, working with your other half. And because you're creating something together. I just had to uh, speak to someone I know about uh, working with her other half. And, you know, there are so many positives. But I think the bottom line is most importantly of all, you have 
someone else in your business who's co-founded you you know especially if they're comp complementary skills it's fantastic um so, yeah, we heard a lot about thinking out of the box uh, uh, and, uh, you know, different perspectives from a creative person. You know, it's nice. We've had a couple of creatives up here, uh, uh, you know, uh, really nice to hear uh, their uh, view on life. You know, I loved Rob's uh, Corgi Trunky. <laughs> you know, it made me laugh. It's fantastic. But only a creative would be able to do that. And, you know, Grassini is uh, looking sideways. So... A lot of the stories reminded me of a quote, and it might be Dennis O'Brien who said it. Sorry, I can't remember who said it. But, um, you know, he said, uh, or somebody said, um, you know, bite off more than you can chew and then chew like hell to make it happen. You know, this is pretty much, I think, what uh, this sort of going into your, uh, an area, a zone which you're not comfortable in or... Um, Making the next step is often about, uh, and in that managing a roller coaster, you know whether or not you make it back up has to do with whether you can get back out there and uh, you know chew like hell <laughs> and move into that uh, new zone out of your comfort zone. Um, we also um, learned about I think I mentioned that earlier how disappointing it can be to hear a no and a big no on television on BBC, and yet you went back and you made it happen. And that's what we have to do very often as entrepreneurs. Persistence is the basis of success, I think. You know, yeah, you can have a great idea, et cetera, et cetera, but, you know, persevere as much as you can, and, you know, if you fail, learn. <laughs> Sometimes we don't fail fast, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, as, lo as long as you learn and it builds character... I loved uh, hashtag vision, hashtag focus, but at the same time, uh, hashtag continuously innovate. <laughs> you know, because they're sort of opposite ends of the spectrum. On one hand, you have to keep to your vision and you focus, but on the other hand, you're innovating continually, continuously and you might even have to pivot. So, thank you, yes, I had to bring it in. <laughs> I know. Um, pivot is a cool word these days. I mean, in those days... It was just survive, you know, <laughs> survive as a business. <laughs> These days is pivot to survive. So, um, you know, it, it's an interesting balance, keeping to your vision and your focus, but innovating continuously, okay? Uh, are your kids proud of you? Uh, you know, I wrote that down to remind myself of the, of the A.A. Milne story. And, um, you know, I think if you're proud of yourself, your kids will be proud of you. What do you think? Do we agree? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and um, the social contract. You know, when Melissa uh, stood up and put up all those pictures and told the story of Nibble and Squeak, it reminded me so much of how we felt. I mean, you know, our original story, uh, you know, always start our story uh, about having a baby and suddenly you, you realize you're a pariah of society, you know, <laughs> and you're so nervous about the baby crying in the plane or, you know, um, because people give you a hard time. And isn't that funny? We complain about an aging population. We complain about uh, there not being enough uh, contributions to our pension schemes, and yet society perceives children so badly and gives them a hard time. And I always say as well, if children are not exposed to art, to great dining experiences or great places, they will never learn how to behave in these places. So, you know, uh, it's interesting to, to see that the same things inspired, you know, uh, uh, us, uh, there's, there's common threads to be uh, seen. And, um, you know, <laughs> I also uh, uh, thought, you know, the, the baby, uh, the nappy, the, the diaper bins, uh, nappy bins, and uh, all that talk about poop. Yes, <laughs> you know, one of my daughters, uh, oh, and this is where you have to be careful, better not name the person because this story might be shared later. And, you know, I was reminded of the Big Bang Theory uh, and Leonard, you know, complaining that his mother wrote books and constantly used him as a subject. <laughs> you know? um, his mother was a psychologist. Yeah, sorry, sounds geeky. How many of you know Big Bang Theory in here? Yeah. And you all know the story about Leonard and his mother, right? His mother's a psychologist. So, you know, uh, using these examples, you know, um, of... Um, uh, so, 
one of my children used to do explosive poops, um, you know, especially when she was a tiny baby. She, okay, one of the girls. Um, uh, and, you know, uh, it, it was just terrible. I mean, I would be praying that we wouldn't be caught in a restaurant or somewhere. I would be praying that we'd be at home so I could just, you know, put her in the bath. But obviously, it didn't always happen that way. So, you know, the back of the boot came in quite handy for some of those changes. But you know, that's normal. It's natural. It happens. And it's so funny that society views that. I mean, I think dogs get a better time than babies, really. Uh, they get more understanding. Um, so, yeah, and I don't, <laughs> I think some of you may not know, but um, uh, uh, Coco Nefralda, do we still have... Um, they know she's left as well. So how many of you know what that actually means? Did you know what that means when you set it up on stage? It means poop in the diaper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was laughing that when you actually... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, well, yes. Did she say she, she would like to rename it? So yeah, that was interesting. So Cocona Fralda, all the Pucci's were keeping quiet, you know. <laughs> But that's what it means. And I thought, you know, the story about b diaper bin, my, um, you know, the bubble coming out of my head about the explosive poop and Coco Nefralde, it was a wonderful uh, melange of ideas in my head. Um, so uh, the, the stream of conscious thought <laughs> carries on. Um, hashtag breastfeeding, hashtag nursing, how little tolerance in my time. I mean, now, wow, uh, amazing that you're creating these requirements in these restaurants, there was definitely not that acceptance at the time. And uh, I had 54 months of it. Of how, how many days? 54 months of it. So <laughs> I can promise you I was struggling because of, you know, but I did it. I did it. I had a uh, muslin cloth and, you know, I, I, I tried to be discreet. I didn't do it in the toilet ever. I, I used to get really upset about the places that would say there's a breastfeeding room here and they would point at the toilet. I mean, that is absolutely disgusting. And my sister actually said once, uh, she asked the, the waiter, would you have your sandwich in the bathroom? Yeah. If not, why should I breastfeed my baby in the toilet? So, you know, so <laughs> now here's where I get militant. But um, so, uh, you know, fantastic. I, you know, I love that global dining recommendations because, you know, we complain uh, uh, that children are eating burgers or, you know, McDonald's or, but... The truth is, if you don't expect, uh, expose them to good quality food, how are they ever going to, you know, keep eating eating it for the rest of their lives? So, um, you know, great great idea from a lot of uh, angles. I also saw this um, uh, balancing act between narcissism and building something people will buy. It's it's a difficult balance. Okay, yes, you have to have enough narcissism, enough ego, enough confidence that your product is right, but people have got to buy it too. So you either have to fine tune your product enough that, you know, people want to and market and, you know, do all those things. Um, uh, you know, I think there's actually a balance. Can't be narcissistic all the time. You know, uh, well, you can afford to be. If you can afford to be, that's, that's fine. Um, Kids being featured in blogs. Yeah, that's the, the story I was saying. My kids are featured very often in, uh, especially in the early days, they feature in a lot of photos and uh, videos. Uh, and then they started asking me, uh, uh, am I going to be paid for this? And do I get rights? Uh, <laughs> royalties. Um, do you do know this is child labor? And then they complain as well at the same time. Um, you know, one of them had to spend a whole afternoon uh, out in the expo uh, filming uh, in the heat. Uh, and then, uh, you know, that's one second of it. She said, I did all that for the one. Welcome to the life of films and modeling. You know, <laughs> so uh, uh, these thoughts popped up in my head as you were talking about the blogs and protection. I mean, it is a fine line. Um, I've had these thoughts too, you know, how much of your uh, family can you expose? And I do it for the good of the Martinelle brand because, you know, the Martinelle brand has been created by a family, a couple with four kids. But, you know, how, how can you protect? So thanks for that panel discussion. Um, very interesting. I love Sonia's. Uh, for an old person, Snapchat is too much for me because I, I just can't keep up with all the various, uh, uh, you know, uh, channels of social media. 
how do you guys do it? Honestly, you know, this afternoon I killed myself running around doing Insta stories, you know, live videos on Facebook and LinkedIn posts and trying to get people to get on the live stream. And my team was doing the same, but, you know, I had to do it to my own following, right? And very hard. Um, so are you Snapchatter or not now? Sorry. There you go. Nice to hear that it's a challenge even for the bloggers. I feel good now, you know. <laughs> Are you a hostage to social media? Yes. And this is where, relating it to uh, one, you know, a couple of the other speeches, you need to be able to turn it off and connect to your family face-to-face -face and don't be a hostage to social media. It's definitely what uh, uh, I believe in. And, you know, we constantly have these... Um, times where everyone has to put their phones into my handbag <laughs> and actually connect and talk to each other uh, instead of snapping each other. So from Munich with love, I love it. <laughs> I love that name. Where, where are you? Yes. Uh, I love the name. Uh, why don't you start another uh, blog called from Frankfurt with love? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I know it's hard choosing, choosing your name, but you got to live with it. It's a lot about the domain name and God, it's very complex, whether you can register it, Hashtag crack. That's on my list. <laughs> now you'll never forget it, Tracy, but yeah. Um, last but not least, um, two more speakers to go. Uh, life can be uh, a walk in the park, and I think that's a very important thing for people who have babies to remember. And I think the same story was told by Abby uh, earlier. You know, postnatal depression is not cool to talk about, but it's a reality, and we should not be afraid to ask for help. And I hope people are there to give help instead of saying, are you ready to jump out the window? Uh, <laughs> must have been on his list. If the patient is ready to jump out of the window, you have to prescribe antidepressants. But anyway. Um, yes, this point about reality and aspiration not matching. Um, interesting point because, uh, you know, a lot about the Instagram world is about perfection. Uh, you know, this is what they're saying. So I'm actually glad that we have so many bloggers who are blogging about real life uh, because, you know, it's not a bed of flowers having a baby and, you know, everyone might not think uh, that life is <laughs> uh, not a walk in the park. You know, uh, everyone should understand that it's hard um, after you've had a baby and not just rely on what comes out on the papers with Kate and... Um, think that it's easy to do that. It's not. it's not. I'm sure she had a whole team behind her helping her out, you know. Um, hashtag failure. Interesting. Last year we had a talk um, by the founder of Ella's Kitchen. Uh, and if you haven't seen a speech yet on the playlist, please go do that because he uh, uh, talked about not just the startup Ella's Kitchen, but um, he spoke about his book, Thinking Like a Toddler. And that was one of the lessons that came out of it, actually, um, fail, failing, uh, you know, get used to failure because a toddler, you know, falls down God knows how many times before, <laughs> you know, he or she actually learns to walk. So, you know, relating it to some other lessons. Creating love brands, Isabel, you know, it's wonderful. And I love the making moments together that really matter because that's what we're about. You know, I often say, yes, you know, parents have the cappuccino with the foam still on it, but it's creating me time, it's creating time with your partner here at Martin Island, it's creating t quality time with your children as well. So it's not, uh, you know, it's, it's not all about the children, it's not all about yourself. And I think, you know, you bring it together nicely that, you know, we're about creating moments uh, uh, for your brand, Mini Marie T. Uh, it's a great product, by the way, you know, uh, I love them too. It's very calming tea. Uh, I tend to drink too much coffee, so I should actually have a bag of these at home, <laughs> you know, and not uh, drink so much coffee anymore. There's no such thing as can't. Love that. Uh, I keep remembering what my dad said to me, uh, you know, confidence is half the battle. Whenever I was feeling a bit nervous about anything, he'd say, confidence is half the battle, you know, and it's so true. So, you know, um, let's keep that in mind. And just want to leave you with a great thing that Andrew uh, um, said in the first speech, which was about networking and meeting people and how last year's event was a catalyst for the leap across the pond <laughs> to the US of A. 
uh, and with our last speaker, Isabel, uh, having this conversation, you know, with someone from the States saying, hey, you know, uh, we need a new distributor for the United States. I think no one should underestimate networking. Uh, you never know whom you're going to meet. You know, I said in a, uh, an event uh, yesterday, uh, which was a women's event, uh, you know, you just need to get out there, network, and listen to everyone. You may not do exactly what everyone is telling you to, but listen to them, because you never know what's going to come out of it. It's about collecting all this information. And, you know, I'm someone who believes that um, every conversation I have has something useful in the end. I may not be able to reply every email that I get or <laughs> connect with every LinkedIn contact I get. I'm very sorry. Please don't take it personally. I'm saying it on the live stream as well and on the video. Uh, I actually get hundreds of emails in my email inbox. But be persistent and write to info at martinelle.com and maybe you'll get put uh, in touch with the right person who could actually re answer you or reply your email. Um, uh, I just I wanted to leave you with that thought because, you know, on one hand, network is important, networking is important, but you know, make sure you're reaching out to the right people in the organization as well. So on that note, um, I'd just like to say a big, big thank you, first of all, to Ms. Olivia Cannon. Thank you for taking us through a fantastic day. Um, I'd like to call upon all the speakers who are still here to take a group photo up here, uh, including Olivia. Please, can you all come up here? Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity before Rob leaves, oh, five minutes, come on, come on, everyone. <laughs> um, Rob has to catch a plane, so let's make sure we take this amazing photo. Uh, I think some people have to leave, so. Okay, best smiles, everyone look at, okay, first camera, Thomas. Everyone look at Thomas. Okay, uh, Eunice and Daniela. Someone um, send me something on WhatsApp. Does anyone have it on an iPhone? Because I need to post ASAP. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone smile at Daniela's iPhone, please. <laughs> So, and a big thank you to all the speakers. I can't thank you enough for, uh, first of all, flying over or coming over and spending the whole uh, couple of days with us. Andrew told me, you know, it's impossible to make a business trip to the States, uh, you know, for less than a week. It's impossible to come here for less than two nights when you, uh, you know, uh, on, on such a, uh, at, for such an event. Thank you very much for uh, spending the time and for bearing all. I mean, it's hard to talk about tough experiences, uh, especially for entrepreneurs, uh, to share difficult moments. And thank you very much for doing that uh, because it's only through our own mistakes and through the mistakes of others that we can learn. And it's only uh, through these amazing stories that we can all uh, be inspired. And, you know, we have to keep inspiring future entrepreneurs um, to to do the impossible. Um, a big thank you to the technical team at the back, Carlos, Nunu, Alvish, and the whole uh, team back there. Thank you very much. It all sounds easy, uh, but it's not, trust me, especially with all of us going there, say, sorry, I need, to, I need you to play this video. By the way, can you download that? And I know how hard it is. Thank you very much uh, uh, to all of you. And the live stream, you know, as well. I know they worked hard on it. They had to make some changes at lunchtime. Thank you for that. And definitely thank you uh, to the marketing and sales team. Uh, Daniela, Rosa, Thomas, um, uh, Daniela O and B. Sorry. <laughs> we have two Danielas on our team. Rosa, who has just come back from maternity leave. Where are you, Rosa? She had to step out. Sorry. Outside. Um, you know, she's living through all that stuff we've been talking about. Um, and uh, Eunice, Marta, um, Bruna Rodriguez down in Sagra, she's not here. 
Uh, who else have I left out? I know this very, uh, you know, I always told my father, don't at weddings, do not start thanking individual people because you'll, uh, you can only go wrong. <laughs> Yeah, a big thank you to everybody. I'm sorry if, I, if I'm not seeing you right in front of me. Luis Santos. No, I mean, no, marketing and sales team first. Luis Santos, of course. Thank you very much. And now I come to the Martin Alkashkaish team. They were on my list. Um, the operational team here, led by Seema Lodi. For those of you who haven't had a chance to meet Seema yet, uh, Seema is our resident manager here who's leading the whole team. Um, why don't you come up here, Seema? Quick introduction. To <laughs> Sorry. Um, thank you very much for all the hard work. Uh, we have been fed extremely well, you might all agree. And Seema's come up with some amazing... Sorry. <laughs> smile, smile <Thank> everywhere. <laughs> Look at the profile. It's <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, thank you very much, really. A great job. The food was excellent, and I hope your stay uh, is, you know, excellent. Uh, I know the team has been working very well. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Especially for the imaginative touches to the coffee breaks, you know, that was uh, genius uh, with, you know, healthy break and then go for the English afternoon tea with a clotted cream. I love that. <laughs> So, no, but fantastic um, meals we've had here today. And um, uh, if Carla is not here, thank you once again. Uh, is Carla still here from Kushkash Tourism? No, either. Thank you for, uh, uh, you know, supporting us. And we've been hashtagging Kushkash a lot. If you haven't, please continue to do so for the rest of your stay. It helps us bring more tourism here. And, um, you know, we, we are here to help build local businesses. So thank you very much. <laughs>